Now, some have said that I seem a little nitpicky when I talk about scripting and programming. Uh, I'm a big efficiency guy. I think that everything, you need to spend lots of time, even in single lines of code, uh, just optimizing everything. That is the kind of person I am. I think that everything, we are making technologies the world is gonna be based on, so you gotta do things right. And I wanna give you in this video one of the best examples of the earth-shattering ramifications of getting a single line of code wrong. Like, doing something inefficiently, or really the problem here is an ad hoc solution. A, a stipulated, like a, a just covering your butt kind of solution to a bug that actually ends up creating far more trouble than the bug uh, would have originally caused, probably. Uh, this is one line of code that has already in the past 10 years had significant impact on a lot of people. And it will probably, I mean, it, it has already changed the course of uh, software and uh, will probably change global finance in the future just because of this one teeny tiny thing. In fact, entire technologies exist to solve the problem created by this one line of code. Okay, hopefully, wow, this is, a, this is a really good hook to get you in. What is this line of code? And the best part of it is that this line of code was written by one of the, I mean, it's not even code, but this like random bug fix was written by one of the greatest programmers of all time. Um, and that is Satoshi Nakamoto, the founder, the creator of Bitcoin. He's one of the best program. Well, I don't know if I want to call him the best programmer of all time or something like that, because I, I don't know C++ and I can't assess his skills. I assume they're good, but he's definitely one of the greatest cypherpunks, cryptographers of our time, uh, just by virtue of creating the concept of uh, cryptocurrency and, uh, you know, using blockchains like this. So let's talk about this. Uh, what What is the line of code? Well, the line of code is actually right here, uh, right here, as you can see. Um, and what is the significance of it? Okay. Uh, now, no, I, well, actually, I should say, a lot of people watching this video, I know what happens whenever I talk about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, a lot of people, oh, I hate Bitcoin, it's a scam. I, you should feel bad for doing this. I don't want to hear about this. No, you actually, if you are thinking stupid things like that, firstly, that's stupid. But secondly, you should actually watch this video because you are going to learn the deep lore, the deep problems about Bitcoin that you can throw in Bitcoiners' faces and uh, you can feel superior to them, even though you're poor and probably don't even know enough about this to talk about it. But you can learn about this. Um, anyway, so uh, the this single line. Actually, if you're a bit, if you some Bitcoin maxis watching this are probably seething already because they know where this is going. They do, they probably know what I'm going to say because this this will this will really hurt some Bitcoiners. They oh oh no not this because uh, this is I guess controversial for stupid reasons that I'll talk about later. Um, okay, way back in the day, let's, you don't need to know how Bitcoin works, but let's just put it this way. This is 10 years ago. This is way back. No one has ever bought or sold Bitcoin. They just mine it on their random computers. The network is so small, you can mine it on your, ran, your, your laptop or something like that. Uh, Bitcoin is worth zero. It's worth nothing. No one ever thought of it. I mean, it's just like a hobbyist project that people are working on in 2010. Um, so... Uh, it, it is based on a blockchain. A blockchain is just a log of all the legitimate transactions. That's all it is. And blockchains, of course, have blocks in them. And what a block is, every 10 minutes, the Bitcoin network creates a block, a miner creates a block that logs all the legitimate transactions in the past 10 minutes. That's, that's all it is. So every 10 minutes, you have a new block. More, uh, 10 more minutes, you have another block. 10 more minutes, you have another block. That's how it works, okay? And it's approximately 10 minutes. It's not always... A, the cryptography of it, you can look it up. Either way. So here is one problem that Satoshi uh, and friends ran into. Hypothetically speaking, let's say you have uh, a troll or a seething no-coiner or someone who just wants to mess up the Bitcoin network or just annoy people. One thing they could do is they could create a million uh, bogus transactions or dust transactions or just random micro transactions of you know, moving just like a one sat around, like small amounts of Bitcoin around uh, that don't mean anything or moving Bitcoin back and forth and like do, doing all this kind of stuff. And the reason you might want to do that to troll people is because it could, uh, you would have all these bogus transactions in the blockchain and then it would increase the size of the blockchain. I mean, it, you might have, you know, 10 KB 
of legitimate transactions, and then you can have like a gigabyte of bogus transactions, right? Some, something crazy like that, if you really wanted to troll them. So the blockchain itself would be bloated up with a bunch of bogus, like nonsensical transactions. That's the problem. So what Satoshi did, and this is something that's totally sensible, totally, again, one of the greatest programmers of all time. If anyone thinks, oh, I'm saying something bad about Satoshi, I'm not. It's a sensible ad hoc solution. But what he did is he said, okay, well, let's just throw in this limitation that every 10 minutes we have this block and the block has to be less than one megabyte. That's it. Can't be more than one megabyte, okay? And at the time, that's a great solution. Uh, that's a workable solution because, I mean, no one's using Bitcoin. People are, you know, maybe there's 10 KB of, uh, uh, of transactions on the Bitcoin network or, or maybe 100 KB. Either way, it's not going to get close to one megabyte. Like if you get a one megabyte block, well, someone's spam attacking. Okay, that, that's what you can conclude. Um, so that rules out all these spam attacks. But here's what has happened. 10 years have passed. Bitcoin is not worth zero. It's worth... Uh, $46,000, okay? Uh, there have been millionaires and billionaires made in Bitcoin. Banks, countries, uh, businesses use Bitcoin and speculators, of course, most of the people using Bitcoin are speculators. Um, but it, it is a crazy market. And guess what? We have way more than one megabyte of transactions every 10 minutes that want to be approved, that are legitimate transactions. So what has happened now? The Bitcoin network has this limitation that it cannot process more than 10 megabytes of transactions in a given time. Years and years ago, that because that always meant a spam attack. But now, no one can get their transactions to go through. So how does that affect you? Well, it affects you because, you know, let, let's say you like what this guy is doing. We'll, we'll talk about what he's doing in a second. But let's say you like this guy's uh, little diff here. So you want to send him some money at his Bitcoin address. Let's say you just want to send him five bucks. Okay, five bucks, five American dollars in Bitcoin. Um, well, that you could send that to him, but you have to send a transaction fee with that. And because you are competing for that one megabyte of space, which is very limited, you have to really, in order to get approved, you have to send a massive transaction uh, uh, or fee with that. So you might, if you want that to arrive to him within the next you know, 30 minutes, you're basically going to have to send that $5 with a $20 transaction fee. Or if you want it to be approved in the next day, maybe $10. I mean, if you want it to be improved, like if you don't mind if it, if, t if it takes like a month to be approved, maybe you can get away with a $5 transaction fee. But you are going to be paying these extraordinary transaction fees. And the reason you're doing that is because you are competing with everyone else in the world who are advertising the transaction fees they're providing to these miners and the miners have the choice. Okay, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna accept the transactions and fit them into this one megabyte if they give me the most money, duh. Like that, that's what you're gonna do. Um, so that now what, what this has caused, what this bug fix has caused is um, you have to pay all this money to transact Bitcoin, okay? And it's only gonna get worse. If Bitcoin is a global currency, I mean, think about this. Like if, if Rockefellers and Rothschilds and central banks across the world are using Bitcoin in the future, no one is gonna be able to get into that one megabyte because you're just gonna have big banks and extremely rich people using Bitcoin. You're not gonna have average people able to get into this one. Yeah, so you'd have to pay you know, hundreds, of, hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars in transaction fees. It's actually pretty nutty when you think it through. So this is one of the big, big, uh, like terrible things about Bitcoin. Now, um, I'll go ahead and talk about this form. We'll talk more about this. Like, I, there's a lot to say about it. There, the lore goes deeper and deeper and deeper. This has caused so many controversies, uh, splits, uh, people hating each other. I will explain that in a second. But way back in the day, again, go back to 2010. This is not a problem. We're not dealing with the block size problem yet. But this guy says, hey, he, he offers a patch. He says, listen, we got this one megabyte limit. Let's at least pump this up. You can do the math here, but I think he suggests, let's put it up to seven megabytes, okay? Now, if Bitcoin, if we had a block size limit of seven megabytes now, that would be great. But here's the problem. Um, the first guy here actually notes this problem. He says, applying this patch will make you incompatible with other Bitcoin clients. The, the thing about Bitcoin is it can't just be, up, you can't just update your software. You can't just change the block limit. 
everyone in the network has to agree they have to be running the same software for that to work. So if you actually just increased the block size on your thing, it wouldn't make any difference for like everyone else would be still be on the same thing and you wouldn't be able to interface with their clients. Okay. Um, so that's what's you know, Satoshi one ups. Why am I running? Hold on. Okay. My computer was going slow for a second. I don't know what that was. Um, uh, so anyway, so, so Satoshi says, oh yeah, that's right. I mean, you, you wouldn't be compatible. And he says, we can phase this change in later if we get closer to needing it. Now, someone later says, they go, they talk about this for a little bit, but someone later says, well, if we upgrade now, we don't have to convince as many people later if the Bitcoin economy continues to grow. And this is prescient. This is like, if they had fixed this back in the day, if they had increased the block size, that would have been one thing, but this is something that nowadays it's basically impossible to increase the block size. In fact, some people have tried, uh, and that's where Bitcoin Cash came from. I'll talk about that in a second, but either way. Now, Satoshi, now the correct solution, I, I think if you want a real principled solution, of course, that's what we're talking about here, like getting things right when you're writing things. It's obviously not to just have one variable. They're like, oh, here's what the block size limit is. But as the system scales up, you're gonna wanna scale up the block size, right? And that's what Satoshi says. He says, it can be phased in like, oh, well, if the block size is greater than so much, or the block number, how many blocks you have in the blockchain, uh, then we can increase the, the block size or something like that. Um, and we can, it can start uh, being in versions way ahead. So by the time it reaches that block and goes into effect, the older versions don't have, that don't have it are already obsolete. Um, so that's what Satoshi suggests. You could have an if statement uh, that checks the block number or a switch statement, case statement, you know what I mean? Um, so that, that just checks the block numbers, uh, like the number of blocks, and then says, okay, well, we'll increase the block size limit depending on that. Um, but here's the problem. They talk about it, they know it's a problem, they know it's gonna be a big issue, but eh, they don't really deal with it then. And as this guy sort of says, well, it's gonna be harder to convince people as time has gone on, and that's how it's happened. Now, as I said, there's this thing called Bitcoin Cash, eventually got to the point, like transaction fees were so extortionate in Bitcoin a couple of years ago, there are these people who created this thing called Bitcoin Cash, which is really just Bitcoin forked with a bigger blockchain, or a block size, excuse me. Um, so they, I think, changed the block limit to, um, I want to say eight megabytes originally, and it scales up, like Satoshi said here, to, I think, like maybe 32 or 64 megabytes or something like that. Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, so it gets bigger and bigger. So that's what Bitcoin Cash uh, strove to do. But the thing is, at that point, like there were so many people in the Bitcoin network and the people who knew about this problem, like realistically speaking, most people in Bitcoin, they're in it for a line go up. They're in it for speculation. They don't freaking know what's going on here. So um, the Bitcoin Cash people only got like a small segment of the Bitcoin community to get behind their fork, then increase the block size. Um, so that means that everyone else is still using this old, the, this, uh, the original system with one megabyte, megabyte of block size. Um, and ironically enough, so few people use Bitcoin Cash, it's not even getting to more than one meg. I mean, it's definitely had block sizes bigger than one megabyte, but I, I think most of the time, like during the past uh, bear, bear market, like they weren't even getting close to one megabyte of transactions. So that's the catch 22. Um, so we're now dealing with this kind of problem um, just because no one fixed this. Now, the, the funniest part, oh, actually, hold on. The funniest part, I got a little cartoon for this. Uh, here, here are two guys at a wall uh, that's not finished. Oh, uh, don't know. That's how Satoshi left it. The funniest thing is there are actually people who think like these guys. Uh, it has now become controversial. In fact, I know for a fact there are probably seething Bitcoin maxis right now who are getting angry that I'm even doing a video talking about this as if this is a problem. Oh, the blocks, it's supposed to be at one megabyte. Because now there are people, well, actually, let me give you the Bitcoin conspiracy first, okay? This is the conspiracy theory. Uh, Bitcoin Cash people will run with this. And it, oh, I mean, it's sort of conspiracy theory, but it's, ha it, it's happening in plain sight, okay? So basically, there was a company called Blockstream, which is, you know, ooh, related to like MasterCard and stuff. And uh, a lot of the people who were against the increasing the block size thing, uh, the small blockers, are on the payroll of Blockstream. And the conspiracy theory goes something like this. Blockstream wants the block size to be small, 
because it artificially debilitates. Like, keeping this bug fix that it doesn't even... It fixes a bug that isn't even a problem at this point. Because, I mean, if spam attacks are happening... I mean, well, who, yeah, it's preventing spam attacks, but it's also preventing, like, normal use of the network. I mean, this is like... It's doing more harm than good at this point. But um, the, the block stream people are basically like, oh, we got to keep this one megabyte... Uh, 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 limit here, and they have their reasons. I'll talk about their reasons for a second, but they're bad reasons. I'll just tell you that. Um, but people will say Blockstream is trying to keep the block size low because they are writing all this new technology and there are new layers of software on top of Bitcoin because Bitcoin can't work by itself. They want to add the, they want, they are looking for a problem for their solutions. And they're saying, oh, well, let's use something like the Lightning Network. So the Lightning Network is this, it, it's a, a, a basic, it's the most, I don't want to call it the most soy devy thing in the world because I don't, it's probably well written. However, it's, you know, soy devy in the sense that it's an entire system created to solve for this one line of code. Okay. Basically, Bitcoin can't uh, transact more than one megabyte of transactions every 10 minutes. So let's build this entire network on top of Bitcoin where transactions occur off chain. So you stake your, well, it's not really staking, but you put up Bitcoin to create a channel on the, the Lightning Network, then you can transact on Lightning. And then those transactions after, you know, the Lightning Network, it has its own ledger of transactions. And then once you finalize that, it is, uh, it, it, what's the word they use? It is, uh, I don't know, finalized, you know what I mean? It's settled, settled on the, the blockchain. So a bunch of transactions in the Lightning. Now, I'm not saying the Lightning Network is all bad. I'm just saying it's a bad, it's, it's solving an unnecessary problem. There are benefits, uh, uh, hypothetically, to using it. There are also deficiencies to using it. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but what the Lightning Network is basically, it's, it's Bitcoin, but without Bitcoin. Or Bitcoin's supposed to be based on Bitcoin, right? Um, where we have this extra layer that's doing transactions, and then we put it on the blockchain after, afterwards, right? Um, so that is supposed to solve the problem. The thing with the Lightning Network, there are many things wrong with the Lightning Network. One of the big ones is like cryptocurrency is supposed to be like, or one of the worrisome things about the Lightning Network and all this like layer two, layer three technology kind of crap is that like, you know, Bitcoin is supposed to be peer to peer electronic currency. Okay. That's what it's supposed to be. And the Lightning Network preserves some of that peer to peer thing. But you really end up using hubs and other things that, you know, involve a little bit more trust. And as more layers are being added to Bitcoin, it becomes less and less decentralized, less and less peer-to-peer, -peer, less and less free, uh, more monitoring. Uh, for example, you know, the Lightning Network, you can't really do what this guy has here. You know, I, oh, he has his Bitcoin donation uh, link. On the Lightning Network, you can't really do that. You can't say, oh, here's my Lightning donation link. Because really, you, you have to, like each transaction has to have, have its own uh, things and stuff like that. Um, so the Lightning Network doesn't really do that thing that the core functionality of Bitcoin does. So what you have to do is you have to build another layer on top of Lightning. So there's a company, uh, Stripe. Stripe is the company that lobbied El Salvador to... Uh, accept Bitcoin as their legal tender. And they said, oh, well, everyone can just install our proprietary Know Your Customer application to use it over the Lightning Network. So now you have, you know, Bitcoin has problem, this problem, therefore we'll use the Lightning Network. The Lightning Network is hard to use and it has its own problems, it has, it has its own deficiencies. So we'll use this proprietary Know Your Customer application. Thankfully, Stripe is at least, um, you do have your private keys at least. It could be worse. It could be custodial. Um, but um, uh, so you, that, that's the worrisome thing. You have, you have these simple problems that could be easily solved, but people don't want to solve them. They would rather build entire layers of software, like increasing the soy devery, increasing the, the monitoring, increasing the centralization. And it might, be, it might be just by a little bit. I'm not totally against the Lightning Network. But I'm just saying, this is why it's so worrisome. It's it's solving up an unnecessary problem, okay? Um, so, uh, and of course it does other things too. People say, oh, Lightning Network does this and that and the other, but you know, I, I'm not gonna talk about that now. Um, people have asked me to do a, a tutorial on setting up a Bitcoin node and a Lightning node, but um, th there are reasons I'm not gonna do that. Well, maybe I will, but either way. 
Um, what was I going to say? So this is the kind of the problem. All of this has happened because of this one issue. Now, I should say this. Let me explain the blockchain or the block uh, stream people, the people who still want one megabyte of transaction. Uh, they want that limit in place. What is their rationalization for that? Because it can't be... They can't agree with Satoshi here in that it's for spam attack, uh, spam attacks or something like that. What they say, and this is the stupidest argument ever, I, I just have to say, it's just the dumbest, most oblivious argument ever. It is scalability, okay? Uh, it, which is like, no, that's like the opposite. Like Bitcoin isn't scalable because this is in place. But th their argument is basically, well, if we increase the block size, then the blockchain is going to be really big because it's going to be it's going to be storing all the transactions for the world on it, uh, and then it's going to be you know 100 terabytes of transactions, um, and yeah, that's that's true. Let me let me say two things about that. Firstly, okay, yeah, but like hardware is pretty easy to scale, and there are also ways for us to find more efficient ways of storing the blockchain or pruning it and stuff like that. That can be dealt with. That is not a big pro like storage space. Like we're not running out of it. Uh, like that is one of the few things that has actually, in, con, you know, continued to increase over time. And there are ways of probably again pruning it or mitigating it in some way. And secondly, if that's your argument, that's really just an argument against the blockchain and cryptocurrency. Because that, like, if you're arguing against cryptocurrency and the blockchain, so be it. But like, don't pretend to be a bitcoiner. You know, don't pretend to be for this technology if you're saying, oh well, we can't increase it because of this problem because at that size you might as well say oh well let's half the bitcoin block size if that's really the problem let's have it let's have everyone transact over lightning and crap like that um uh so that that is one thing the second thing is uh what is the second thing did i already say the two things uh oh yeah 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 so <laughs> i don't I totally uh yeah so file size is not a big issue um, and yeah, uh, if, if you're against that, it's more just you're against cryptocurrency, like that, uh, you're against blockchains. You're just saying something that's inherently bad to blockchains. And there's no reason to draw that line at one megabyte as opposed to like, you know, 500 KB or something like that. Or, I mean, otherwise then that's just what it is. Um, so for people outside of that, uh, mindset, well, the real scalability problem for Bitcoin, what I'm trying to get at, it's not like blockchain size. It is the fact that Bitcoin literally can't transact more than like one megabyte of transactions every 10 minutes. That is the issue. That is the problem. That is the actual scalability problem. I think I said earlier in the video, but I'll say it again. When Bitcoin is going to be a global reserve currency, uh, a global way of storing value used by Rothschilds and Rockefellers and banks and, uh, you know, governments and stuff like that. That one megabyte of block size, you know, is not going to be enough for average people. No normal human is going to be able to send Bitcoin from one person to another. You are not going to have that. What that means is you have to use Lightning. You have to use Layer 2 which involves some layer of increased trust, some layer of increased centralization. Um, and that ultimately means that the core of cryptocurrency that is founded to be this decentralized network is totally compromised. You're now building, and now we're building proprietary, know your customer and probably custodial applications on top of all this stuff because it like the core functionality doesn't work because of this one line of code and you know other things there are other flaws to bitcoin but this one thing has caused so much annoyance so much drama and frustration and if only if only if only satoshi had taken his own advice uh and again like he's a great programmer not saying anything bad about satoshi uh, but if only he had taken this his own advice and put in something like this we would never have to talk about this there would be no block stream there would be no need for a lightning network everyone could just send money to a bitcoin address and wouldn't have to worry about it it would be much more scalable and i guess we we will deal with the increased hard drive usage of actually being able to transact like have legitimate transactions over the system oh my goodness oh no we have so many transactions we have to store them well that's what a blockchain is okay so that's all i have to say that that also I, i'll just add add 
to this. This is why I'm a Monero person. Now, of course, I don't have any reasonable amount of Monero. I have more Bitcoin than Monero, but like in terms of dollar value. But Monero solves this, it solves the privacy problem of Bitcoin. It solves the ASIC, you know, problem of mining being centralized. Um, you know, Mon Monero is ASIC resistance. That's why uh, Monero is, I mean, it's not perfect. I have lots of critiques about Monero. I've thought about doing a video about the problems I have with it. However, um, especially if you want to transact nowadays, like if you want to send someone $5, forget about it on Bitcoin. It's just not going to happen. Uh, Monero or Litecoin or anything, like basically it, every other cryptocurrency, this is the most maddening thing. Every other cryptocurrency has solved this problem or like doesn't have to deal with it. And Bitcoin, like there are some dogmatic Bitcoin maxis who are just tethered to this, it probably seems ridiculous, I'm harping on this, but there are people who like dogmatically hold to this and will like talk as if this is the most difficult problem to solve and like we just don't know how to do it. And, oh man, it's so hard. What, you think, you think Monero can scale? You think Bitcoin Cash can scale? How can they process more than one megabyte of transactions? Anyway, this is stupid. This video is way too long. Uh, that's it.